Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and thanks for joining. You're going to enjoy the process of painting. Um, if you're here for a second or third or fourth time, uh, thanks so much for coming back and checking out another video, but more importantly, thanks for getting creative. So today's painting is geared towards first time painters. So this is for those of you that have never picked up a brush, never tried painting, or maybe you've done one or two paintings, but you still wanna build your comfort level. These are great paintings um, to kind of help build your confidence. So what you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a supply kit. And in that supply kit are the general supplies that you need to get started painting. So grab what you need, utilize what you have at home, and most importantly, just get into the process of painting sooner rather than later. Um, and this is gonna be a lot of fun. So once you've got your supplies, let's go ahead and get started painting. guys this is going to be another fun painting perfect for my first time painters so gather your supplies head on over to your setup and make sure you turn on your favorite music and take your progress pictures as we go through the process today so we're going to start with that large flat brush and we're basically you get to basically be an abstract painter as we fill in the background so you're more than welcome to switch out colors if you prefer so we are going to start with kind of a light yellow and that's going to be in equal parts yellow and white. And we're basically just going to put a circle in the center. Um, and it doesn't matter how big or if you place it a little higher towards the top or closer towards the bottom. Wherever you go is good for today. So we're basically making that circle. And then we're just going to keep expanding that circle. So this is the center of our sun. So I do want to make it pretty a pretty good size. Um, but if you feel like making it smaller or larger than what I do on the video, go right ahead and do that. Now, if you want, you can see that I am actually grabbing a little bit of that white, putting in the center, and then now grabbing the yellow and going on the outer ring of that lighter yellow. And we're going to kind of mimic this um, as we fill in all the canvas space as we reach the edges and just getting darker and darker and darker. So I do recommend, I'm using student grade paint, so I recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker and that will help with the blending. And here you can see where I'm adding some of the orange and the yellow, um, even a little bit of white if you feel like it. And we're gonna do another ring around um, that yellow. And then like I said, we'll get a little bit darker and then a little bit darker. So because the paint is wet, that yellow that you put on there and now this orangish yellow, where the two colors meet with light pressure you can um, just kind of go right over it with your brush and you'll kind of blend the two colors. This is a very uh, satisfying thing to blend paint. And if you feel like finger painting, go right ahead and do that. And you saw that we did grab the orange, go around the edge. We're going to do the same thing uh, with a little bit more orange and then we'll be doing it with the red in the corners. So like I said, if you wanted to do pinks and purples and blues, you are more than welcome to switch out colors. Now, once you get your final um, color on there and you've filled in all the edges, you can go back and just kind of blend and soften and finger paint if you want, but you want to do everything that you want to your background now, then we're going to let it dry um, and then put the bonsai tree design on top of it. All right, you're doing great. And like I said, if you need to go back with other colors, I did grab the smaller brush and put in a little bit more white in the center. Um, and you can still use that brush to kind of lightly uh, blend the colors as it radiates out. You'll notice that as you uh, radiate out with this brush stroke, you're going to want to wipe it off before you go back into the center. All right, so do let your paint fully dry before you get into um, the outline. And we are going to start with a middle sized brush in black paint and just kind of putting this choppy, kind of rock looking landscape on there. And I do like it going right underneath um, that middle design, that middle sun circle. And then now we're going to be doing the tree, and it is a bonsai tree, so it can be kind of any weird shape that you want. So I'm kind of starting with the tree trunk first, and then we'll put some branches on, and then we'll fill in the ground. 
Now, if you need to, you can switch to the small pointy brush. Feel free to go back and forth and just kind of find what's comfortable with you. And as you work with either one of these brushes, um, play with the pressure of your brush. Uh, more pressure is going to create a wider line. Lighter pressure is going to create a skinnier line. So you want to use the lighter pressure as you get into those smaller branches um, and even little twigs at the end of your branch. So again, we're just doing this kind of funky shape bonsai tree. Um, you can make it anything that you want. You can follow along uh, with the weird design that I'm doing on mine, or if you have another image in mind, uh, feel free to uh, observe that one and add it to your canvas. Now, if you are holding your breath, make sure you take a deep breath, relax. Um, it does not help you to hold your breath. And if you're finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply each of these little lines, that does mean you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, it is going to be a benefit to your process. So you're doing a great job. Um, just the fact that you are painting makes you already successful. All right, just kind of filling it in. I'll be filling in that tree trunk and adding some kind of interesting roots towards the bottom. Like I said, feel free to deviate and make this tree what you want it to be. If you need to, you can add a little bit of water to your brush, but you never want it dripping wet. And I'm, I'm using um, some pretty nice student grade paint. I recommend Liquitex Basics. You can buy that in the art stores. And it's a great quality brand to start with um, and not break the bank um, for gathering your supplies. But I like paint that's a little bit more viscous, a little bit more solid, and not so runny. It's a little bit better quality paint when it's not so runny. All right, so filling in that tree. Doing good. And if you are having issues um, with that shaky hand again and you're doing your breathing, try resting your forearm against the edge of the table or even putting your pinky down and using that as your pivot point as you make these smaller lines. All right, and another place to pause your video. Hopefully you were taking your progress pictures at the other spot as well. So now we're going in right with that direct green. Um, and you'll actually notice I think I end up grabbing the large brush in a moment. But we're going to fill in that whole bottom area with pretty thick paint. And then we're going to apply some black on top of it and do some wet on wet blending and even some yellow. And again, if you want to do this solid black or a different color, go right ahead and do that. There we go. Now I'm grabbing that large brush. Just makes it a little bit easier covering a larger space. All right, doing good. And again, just kind of apply it thick. With more pressure on your brush, your brush strokes will show up. With lighter pressure, um, you'll have a little bit more of a smoother effect. And then here, you just saw that I grabbed the black. I'm kind of throwing it on there, kind of chunky. If you end up getting too much black on your brush, just wipe off that excess paint and you can go back to kind of blending it in. And this is really quick, um, not a whole lot of uh, method to the madness, but just kind of breaking up the color. I wanted more of the dark on the right side, and then with this yellow, more of the light on the left side. And you'll notice as you slap that yellow on there, it gets eaten up pretty quickly. So you kind of just want short, choppy brush strokes as you're applying the yellow on top of the green. All right, another place to pause the video, take your progress photo. And again, you fully want your painting to dry. You want all that black of the tree to dry before you start putting your foliage on. So I'm using that middle flat brush, making a medium purple. And we're going to kind of hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas and literally just tap the brush for the places where our foliage is on our bonsai tree. And we'll be doing this with some darker, with the darker purple and with white to give it a little hint of shading. So again, you're just holding that brush perpendicular to the canvas, just kind of tapping it to kind of create this foliage area. And as you're doing this, maybe step away from your painting and look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. Are you liking how the foliage looks? Do you want to add a little bit more somewhere um, and assess that? So now we're going in with just the direct purple and we're going to kind of put this at the bottom of the foliage. And because that medium purple is still wet, it's going to change the color. It's going to diffuse that uh, dark purple just a little bit. 
So kind of like adding the yellow to the ground, you can be a little more generous with the purple paint and maybe not move your brush as much. We will be putting white on the top of these, this foliage, doing the exact same thing. So here we'll move into the white. And do clean that brush really good, especially if you have that dirty water. Um, you don't really want to kind of contaminate your white with the dirty water. So same thing, grabbing a little bit of white, we're going to put it on the top of the foliage using that same application with holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas and just tapping it. This is a very therapeutic and stress relieving aspect of the painting process. And again, an awesome painting for my first time painters. I hope you guys enjoyed the process and don't wait too long to do your next one. You will build on the skills that you learned today. So until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you're proud of yourself and you like the way that your paintings turned out. I highly recommend that you paint on a regular basis and try a variety of subject matters and you'll kind of find your groove, but it's more about the process and painting multiple times rather than trying to get a perfect painting um, from your first get-go. So please keep painting. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy and email me your photos of what you paint, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I love seeing your pictures, and when I post those on social media, it encourages other people that are kind of scared to start painting, it encourages them to give it a try. So your sharing, your feedback um, really helps encourage others to kind of find the joy of painting as well. Uh, when you're ready to kind of step your skills up to your next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com, and check out some of my more in-depth courses on there. I will have some intermediate courses as well as some beginner and advanced beginner classes on there. Um, check out the Paint Your Pet and the Palette Knife class. It's a lot of fun and they're both pretty good stress relievers, um, so give those a try. Um, I think that's it. I really am glad that you guys took time out of your day to hang out with me and you got creative. Again, don't wait too long before you get creative again. So until next time, cheers.